Hey guys, I'm still kind of on hiatus here, but I thought I'd direct your attention to the three articles you should definitely check out. Of course, all three articles are linked in the description. The first article summarizes a paper published by researcher Elaine Howard Eklund titled Scientists Negotiate Boundaries Between Religion and Science. Specifically, I want to draw attention to this paragraph. They interviewed a scientifically selected sample of 275 participants pulled from a survey of 2,198 tenured and tenure-track faculty in the natural and social sciences at 21 elite U.S. research universities. Only 15% of those surveyed view religion and science as always in conflict. Another 15% say the two are never in conflict, and 70% believe religion and science are only sometimes in conflict. Approximately half of the original survey population expressed some form of religious identity, whereas the other half did not. Now, I'm sure you've heard atheists cite an informal 1998 survey that found 93% of National Academy of Sciences members identify as atheists. The atheists who cite the survey then fallaciously infer that this means being a scientist leads to being an atheist. This is a basic correlation-causation fallacy, which ironically reveals a great deal of ignorance of the scientific method on their part. A decent scientist would never assume correlation implies causation. Elaine Howard Eklund's research, both in this study and in her previous work, discredits the idea that religion and science are in conflict, or that the study of science leads to atheism. The second article deals with the Sudarium of Aviedo, which is the cloth traditionally believed to have covered the face of Jesus on the cross. The Sudarium displays patterns of blood that, unlike the Shroud of Turin, do not describe any recognizable human image, but recent forensic analysis reveals that both the Sudarium and the Shroud almost certainly cover the same person. Both claws are stained with the rare AB blood type, and the shroud has been forensically dated to Jesus' time. The idea that either of these are medieval forgeries is becoming more and more implausible the more these relics are studied. So here we have forensic evidence lending scientific support to the gospel accounts of the crucifixion and resurrection. When was the last time there was ever any scientific evidence for atheism? The third article comes from the website Idiot Joy Showland, where author Sam Chris does an amusing takedown of Neil deGrasse Tyson. The article is required reading from start to finish, but this paragraph in particular makes an important observation. A decent name for this tendency, for stars and spaceships recast as the instruments of a joyless and pedantic class bite, would be I fucking love science. Science here has very little to do with the scientific method itself. It means ontological physicalism, not believing in our Lord Jesus Christ, hating the spectrally stupid, and, more than anything, pretty pictures of nebulae and tree frogs. Science comes to metonymically refer to the natural world, the object of science. It's like describing a crime as the police, or the ocean as drinking. The entire website is worth checking out. Sam Chris also has an article titled Richard Dawkins and the Ascent of Madness, which functions both as an incisive critique of Dawkins and as an amusing pastiche of post-structuralism. Again, links to the articles are provided down below in the description. There's going to be a whole lot more content coming up on this channel, so please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.